Well, hello there everyone and welcome to a new video over here on Anton's Hardware Channel. Today it's another lovely day, but it's still Corona time. And so what do you do with your spare time? Well, you can either go outside and sit in the sun all day, or you can clean out your attic. Well, that's what I did. And I found a lot of old hardware somewhere stuffed in a corner. And I thought, well, what should I do with all those old hard drives that I have? Why not build a NAS? Now, for those that don't know what a NAS is, it's a network attached storage. And uh, basically it's just a couple of hard drives uh, in a little case that has uh, that have been connected to the internet. There's no way that you can connect your monitor, mouse or keyboard to it. It's just as a couple of hard drives attached to uh, the network where you can uh, centralize all your data like uh, movies, uh, pictures, maybe some music, whatever you want, and you can connect to it with every device in your household. So what do you need to build a NAS? Well, most of it, it's the regular things that you use for a computer, a regular computer, let's say motherboard, a CPU, CPU cooler, RAM, all those kind of things, a case, of course, a, a power supply. Uh, for this build, I used an some old hardware that I did a video about uh, earlier. It's an Intel Q9650. It's a old quad core CPU with its motherboard. And I believe it's an MSI P45. Eight gigs of memory, uh, a power supply. I used a an old case that I still have. It's a CM Stacker 830, which used to be the bomb to have. It's a huge case. It's really heavy, but it was nice to uh, see that case again and to use it. Now I also went online and got myself this card and I have to look it up. It's an MRU PCI SATA card, 8 port PCI Express to SATA controller expansion card, 8 gigabytes per second SATA 3 PCIe card. That's what the description is. But basically what it is, it's an expansion card with two controllers on them. Uh, a J Micron and a Marvel. And what this actually does is, well, you can uh, attach about eight, no, not about, you can attach eight SATA hard drives, two of which you can boot from, the others, they are not bootable. So this you can use to attach all those hard drives. Now I can almost hear you say, well, why don't you use the onboard SATA controllers? Um, the motherboard that I use, the MSI P45, only supports SATA 2 and I wanted to use SATA 3 and that's what this card provides and the other one doesn't, the onboard doesn't do that. Now, everyone knows that booting up a PC without an operating system really doesn't work. So. For this system, I used Open Media Vault. Now, why did I use Open Media Vault? Well, that system is the one that installed the most easily because I had some issues with free NAS and NAS for free. Both of them had some issues with installing or booting or detecting all the drives. Uh, Unraid is really cool, but you have to pay after a 30-day uh, trial period. And when you, when you buy a system with only old hard drives and old components, it's sort of strange that you want to spend money on an operating system when you have someone of something that's already there and it's free. It's Open Media Vault. Now, I did enjoy installing and working with that operating system because it works out of the box, had no issues, it detected all the hard drives, and of course, it's free and it's made still maintained. It is based on Debian Linux and, well, as all the Linux nerds out there know Debian is a really big operating system. So it will be maintained for a long time. And I installed everything. I created a, a RAID array. I used a RAID 6 array for this because, well, I had more than enough drives for that. And I uh, partitioned it, created shared folders, and I started pumping data around. Because, well, why build a NAS if it's not fast enough? And that's just what I did. Here are some of the results. Now, this is a Synology Disk Station 209. It's an old NAS, it's about 11 years old, but still the performance is kind of good between 50, okay, it's dropping now, between 50, 60 megabytes per second. It's more than enough for regular backup jobs. 
Now, this is also a Synology. This is a Synology 412 Plus, which has four drives in there. And although its performance is really good, it's sometimes it saturates the one gigabyte line. Uh, it has some problems with smaller files, as do all NASs have. But this one is, well, my main NAS at this moment. As you can see, I'm uh, moving some files from older videos that I did as just as a benchmark. And this is what happens when I copy those same files to the new homebrew, home build NAS that I built. Okay, it has six drives, so the performance was bound to be a lot better, but it, I didn't expect it to be so good as this one. So it completely saturates the one gigabyte and the performance is way better than any of the NASs that I own. I also do own a DNS a 323 NAS, which is over 20 years old, but I didn't use that one for the, well, comparison, because, well, it's really slow. But it's cool to see that my homebrew NAS is fast enough to saturate the one gigabyte line. So the network performance of this homebrew NAS uh, was really good. It transferred all the files in a, well, it saturated the one gigabyte line. But the main downside of using a self-built homebrew NAS is that power consumption. Because all the components that I used were old components. And back then, this was a high-performance PC. So it was expected that the power consumption was huge. Now, when I say huge, it's not like 500 watts. It was more or less like what I'm showing you right here. Compared to a Synology 412 Plus a NAS that one uses well about this much amount of power and it doesn't even come close to my homebrew NAS so that brings me to the conclusion how cool is it to have your own homebrew NAS well it is really cool first of all the build project was really nice to do I really enjoyed doing that and using the uh, the expansion card using expansion cards is always cool in my opinion the more cards you have in your system the cooler uh, it was also nice to have a second life on this system or on these hard drives and the old hardware. But in the end, I'm not going to use it, even though there's a lot of uh, uh, capacity on there. The performance was cool. The power consumption. It's not a system that you can leave on running 24 seven. Um, that's it for me for today. Please leave a like. Don't forget to subscribe. And I hope to see you soon in the next video, which is about the red box behind me. Please leave a like, don't forget to subscribe and see you next time.